For the last 25 years, I've been struggling to find the silver bullet to mark in the most effective strategy. There's lots of research, there's lots of psychology, and I still don't know the answer. I have a better understanding, but if I'm still struggling as a practitioner to understand what effective marking looks like, then certainly mum and dad don't understand. What schools or the most effective schools are doing on my travels is communicating with parents what they are marking and what they're not marking. And many schools have abolished homework, making it optional, particularly for primary pupils. Over the last two years, I've probably visited about 100 schools in England, Scotland, and Wales, and a number of schools in Europe and in the Far East. From my experience of visiting these schools, the number one workload issue for every teacher in any setting in any part of the country is marking. If I rewind 25 years back to the point when I first started as a teacher, marking was a real issue for me. Number one, I didn't understand the difference between formative and summative assessment. And number two, I didn't know how to deal with every lesson having 30 pieces of work to assess. So what I'd like to share are 13 or 14 workload tips to help you reduce your marking burden. The first idea is pretty obvious. Self-marking. What we need to do as teachers in the classroom is educate our children in terms of how to mark. In its simplest form, this might just be a spelling test with the correct words displayed on a worksheet or on the whiteboard at the front, and then students mark their own work. Of course, you might want to mix it up, let the students mark each other's, and so on and so forth. Idea number two, might be a little bit controversial, is appointing a student to mark other pieces of work. What you need to ensure here is you don't want the student to be working as the teacher, but maybe appoint each student on a rotor, but definitely ensure that they understand the assessment criteria. Tip number three, simple color coding. Red, amber, green pen, I might just highlight on the margin of the book or give the students the pens themselves and they can signpost if they understand the work. At least it gives me a visual cue, but also reduces the workload dramatically for myself or for the students when they want to assess their own work. Idea number three is very similar to the traffic lighting technique. Students might want to put a red, amber, or a green dot at the top of their work to tell the teacher if they are happy with how they've performed. In between these two ideas, self and peer marking. Again, it's a great tool. You need to educate your students how to do these processes. And if students can self and peer assess their own work, whether they are seven years old or 16, it would dramatically reduce your workload, particularly if it becomes a routine in the classroom. Number six, live marking. Now live marking, I've been using this technique for many, many years in the classroom. Traditionally, it might be a pen. I go to the students in the classroom and I give them live written feedback in the classroom. Rather than setting myself up to fail trying to find all 30 pupils, I might target four or five groups of students and identify what they need to find and fix in that lesson. Another technique for live marking, I've used a visualizer. Now, many years ago, visualizers were incredibly expensive, but today you can purchase them for 30 or 40 pounds, plug them into your device, use such pieces of software such as Apple TV, and then I can show the work under a visualizer, whether it's on the table in front of me and it beams the work up onto the whiteboard for all students to see. What it allows me to do is I annotate or actually model the work itself so that all students can see. This is a great tip for managing transitions and low level behavior. Another technique, a few at the time, as I've already mentioned, rather than setting yourself up to fail to mark 30 pupils work in the lesson or taking 30 books home, mark a few at a time. So I might come to the front, mark four or five pupils work in the lesson or take their, their work home and then return it to the next lesson. It's a much more effective strategy than trying to target all 30 at once. Two other very important workload strategies in terms of optimizing the time you have available. If I'm providing a test, I might ask the students to open their work to the page. If it's just a general piece of classroom work that needs assessed, as students leave, write pupils, can you leave your work open to today's date? Give it to me in your hands as you leave. In terms of workload, this stops me having to find the work in the book, wasting 30 seconds each time. If you add the maths, 30 seconds each book, 30 students, 25 lessons a week, 38 weeks of the academic year, I'm gonna save myself hours and hours of time trying to find work to mark. 
Another great strategy for primary teachers is often pupils' work is stacked in books on their table. Rather than me collect the books and take them back to my desk or take them home, I physically go to the pupils' tables and mark the work there and then. Again, in terms of optimization, that's going to save me 30 seconds taking the books away, bringing them back, and so on and so forth. If you add all the mass, 30 pupils, 25 lessons a week, 38 weeks a year, I'm going to save lots more time. Three more ideas, all linked together. Provide students with a class marking sheet, an example test paper, or regularly test. And again, going back to the idea about self and peer assessment, and get the students to mark in the class, or I mark in the class too. These three ideas are very connected, but again, a very good strategy to reduce workload. If you make it a habit, a routine, it's gonna be no surprises for pupils, and actually you'll leave the working week feeling much happier and looking after your own well-being. Final tip. Find a subject specialist or someone in your year team and mark together. Swap books, work out various strategies, have a conversation. Perhaps also consider whole class feedback, which is a, a new evolving strategy. Rather than I mark all 30 pieces of work, I look through the 30 pieces of work and I provide collective feedback to all the students, but highlight one or two areas to improve, one or two recommendations, and target one or two individuals to work with in the lesson. One more idea from me is voice technology. I've been using voice activation or voice dictation in my life for the past 10 years, writing blogs, writing books, but also marking. If you can use the technology in your hands, you can speak into devices to generate text, to then provide this to students through an email or through a document which is on the cloud which they can access your feedback. And one final tip from me, if every teacher stopped using the word marking and replaced the word feedback from tomorrow, then we might be able to reduce our workload burden collectively. Feedback manifests itself in three forms, written, verbal and non-verbal. I might do signals like this, or sit down, or put your chewing gum in the bin, all sorts of things. Although that's not assessment in its broadest sense, it's another way of providing feedback. Research I'm conducting with UCL is looking at verbal feedback. When teachers speak to pupils in class, they will have the same or better outcomes. This research is published in September 2019. So thank you for watching. I really hope this video helps reduce your marking burden. To find more videos like this on this theme, Click the link below.